So I just rinsed off my face and to damp skin, I'm gonna put a little bit of this Zeroid moisturizer. Yeah, I've been going back and forth between these two urea creams, the Eucerin one and the Zeroid one. I really find that they provide a nice balance between smoothing the surface of the skin and also improving moisture content because of that urea. And by applying them to the skin while it's still damp, the humectant aspect of urea, it's hygroscopic. It really helps pull water into the top layers of the epidermis, smoothing everything out and just improving skin barrier function. And I'm gonna put a little urea on my arms too. This is the Cetaphil Rough and Bumpy. Now the urea in this is 20%, too strong for the face. We'll burn a sting here. But I use it on my arms to keep the KP of keratosis pilaris under control. I get that too. I also like using it on my elbows to rejuvenate them because they're in neglected territory. <laughs> All right, so my face is dry. I'm just gonna put on the uh, mineral cream from MD Solar Science, their kids' mineral sunscreen. A lot of you guys commented that you do not care for these sunscreens. They feel you don't like the consistency of them. I can see how they're not for everyone, but for me personally, I just really like them. And this kids' one for an all-mineral sunscreen cast is not, it's not too bad. I'm all in pink this morning. Now, last weekend I commented that I started reading Dope Sick and it was a little slow to start. They went into a lot of detail. They were going into a lot of detail about like the legal proceedings and I just kind of found that a little boring. But now it's gotten much better in terms of actually interviewing some of the people affected. I can't believe February is just about over. I'm gonna have to film my favorites video soon for you guys. Speaking of favorites, in my last favorites video or two favorites videos ago, I talked to you guys about how much I have been loving my Misen knives. Today's video is sponsored by Misen, so I'm definitely gonna do some veggie prep today. I'll show you guys the knife in action and why I like it so much. One of you guys gave me this tip for peeling garlic where you shake it up in a jar, so I tried doing that today. It kind of worked, so thank you whoever it was that shared that with me. It saved my fingers. Anyways, when it comes to food prep, virtually every chef agrees that a sharp, well-balanced chef's knife is the essential workhorse for any kitchen. Now, unlike a cheaper knife, a high-quality knife will stay sharper longer, and this allows you to cut through anything in the kitchen with ease, lasting a lifetime, and in general, it makes cooking easier and more fun. It's also a lot safer. So while I've known for quite some time that a good quality chef's knife is something that's definitely worth investing in, especially with all the food prep that I do, I've always just kind of put it off because of the astronomical price. That is until I discovered the Misen Chef's Knife. Now, you've probably heard the hype around Misen's Chef Knives, especially if you like to cook a lot. You'll see a lot of YouTubers talk about them. They're definitely the holy grail of knives. I mean, their average customer rating is 4.8 out of five stars, but it's half the price of other high-end knives on the market. It's made with premium AUS 10 steel, which offers an even better balance between lasting sharpness and durability. Now, most Western style knives actually have an edge angle of 25 degrees. The Misen Chef's Knife has acute 15 degree angles for a noticeably sharper cutting face. I didn't realize this until I was doing some more research into knives, but the knife world is split into two major players, German steel known for its toughness and durability and Japanese steel known for its razor sharp edge. Rather than pick a side, Misen opted to cherry pick the best qualities from each to create the ultimate hybrid design. And Misen's unique slope bolster pulls double duty. The slope shape encourages a proper pinch grip for comfort and control, while the bolster's placement creates better access to the full length of the blade. Their knife was hand tested and refined by professional chefs, avid home cooks, product designers, and people who've never even held a knife before. Now, in addition to their popular chef's knife, they have a bunch of other different types of knives on their website, like a paring knife, a knife for cutting bread, and they also offer storage solutions. I need to get this magnetic knife strip now that I'm looking at it to store mine. I've just been keeping it in the box that it came in. They also have a lot of great cutting boards. They also have a lot of high quality cookware at an affordable price. Personally, I have their nonstick pan and I love it. 
stuff just slides off of there without any difficulty. It's been a great addition to my kitchen. Now I am by no means a professional chef, but I do cook pretty much every single meal for myself. And having a good quality knife has made a huge difference in not only safety, but efficiency. I find that meal prep goes a lot faster since getting this mise en knife. And I really like how it stays sharp and the handle is easy to use and doesn't slip when I'm chopping vegetables quickly. Not only that, it's the same quality, if not better than other premium knives, but at half the cost. This chef's knife has truly become the single most important tool in my kitchen. So if you are in the market for a good quality knife or cookware, definitely check out Mizen. And right now they are offering a great deal. If you click the link in my description box, you can get an extra 20% off site-wide plus free shipping on orders over $75. Well, hey guys, I just finished filming a video for you all on 10 reasons why retinol fails. <laughs> so check that out if you guys are using retinol and getting frustrated, whether it be prescription retinol or over-the-counter adapalene or an over-the-counter cosmeceutical retinol. Definitely check that out uh, because I do think that it is easy to get frustrated <laughs> with using it. But I'm wearing this cardigan from Cooley Bar here. I've got a blanket on over my, <laughs> over my legs. Let me step back so you can see it. Yeah, I have this cardigan from Cooley Bar. I get them on Amazon and it's actually the Cooley Bar store. So it ships like directly from Cooley Bar if you buy on Amazon or you can buy from their website. What it, you know, it doesn't really matter. But anyways, I have this one and I have a pink one. And I just find they're perfect because they're not heavy. It's great here where it's always humid. They don't feel like cloying or anything. You don't need a dedicated UPF fabric, however, like the Cooley Bar stuff. Um, fabrics that are a tight weave will block out UV. Uh, dark colors actually are better than lighter colors at blocking out UV. And then of course you have to consider the material. If the material is threadbare or if it's wet from your sweat, it loses the ability to, to protect. It's I also put these earrings on. I haven't worn them in a while. These are from Sorelli. <laughs> I love their jewelry. It's kind of, I don't know, out there a little bit, but it's fun. This little notebook I've been loving. If you were actually sent this to me a while ago, um, I believe that it was purchased at Target because I see the Opal House, it's the Opal House brand. But this is what I keep little notes in. Like I jot down what I'm gonna say in, in videos so I don't ramble too much, although <laughs> I still ramble a lot of times, um, but yeah, I really like it. I'm gonna have to look out for more like this, but you know, with Target, they'll get something cool that you actually like, and then boom, they no longer ever carry it again. That is one thing I complain about all the time when it comes to Target is they take away the things that I like. Here in Michael's looking at the stickers. Summer will be here before you know it. I love these sweet kawaii stickers. They're really cute. I like that house. Aren't these mini frames adorable? The little clip. Obviously you could make something like that, but it's so cute. Two for $6.99 on the mini frames. This sensory foam does seem like fun, I'm not gonna lie. Although does it get all over everything? It seems like it would make a mess. You can stretch it. Oh, shrinky dinks, I love these. They're having a comeback and mermaid themed. These are always so satisfying. Unicorns, dragons. Um, I get really tempted by these. Oh, how cute. Aww. Moon rabbit, that's sweet. Check out this cake mold. 
I love it because it's basically like little slices of cake for each of the petals. That's adorable. Wow, those eggs are pretty too. Little flower cakes. This picture is pretty. And they have they have glasses to match. So the stuff that I prepared in the slow cooker, I have divvied up into these meal prep containers. It's just a veggie base. I can put whatever protein I want on top of it. I like to change that up from beans to tofu, tempeh, what have you. Anyways, um, these meal prep containers, I have been loving. I got them on Amazon a while ago and I was a little apprehensive because you know, sometimes Amazon, it can be a miss, especially with lids and stuff. But so far so good. They're glass and then the lid is plastic and it anchors them in place. Speaking of Amazon kitchen purchases, this I originally saw on Jen Chapin, one of Jen Chapin's videos. It is a lid rest slash spoon rack and it's amazing. I need to clean it because as you can see, look at all of that condensation that was on the lid and it just drains in there instead of going all over the place and splattering with your slow, uh, slow cooker. <laughs> hey guys, I just got out of the shower, but I opted to not wash my hair tonight. Uh, so I'm wearing my sh shower cap, as it's called. Love it. Anyways, what was I going to tell you guys? I had a thought in my head. I was going to share with you guys. Oh, I know. This morning I was chit-chatting with you guys about urea. Recently I did a video on urea products for the face. And this product was one that I reviewed in that video because I saw one of you guys purchase it on Amazon. I recognize your um, picture, there we go, and your name. One of you guys purchased it on Amazon, gave it a good review, so I decided to order it and try it out. And I just wanted to show you guys, I've just done my skincare routine, I got my tretinoin on. And the nice thing about urea is that it's not really irritating. It can sting, but it's not, it doesn't get in the way of other active ingredients or anything. I mean, it's naturally present on your skin, right? But I just want to show you guys kind of the consistency of this particular product. It's very, I think it's the glycerin content in this. Don't I kind of look like a, an artiste? Anyways, I think it's the glycerin content in this that makes it a little sticky tacky for the liking of some people, but... Another benefit of using urea in your skincare is for those of you guys who are really bummed out by sebaceous filaments, which are like nothing to worry about. They're just like, they come out of the pylum sebaceous unit, the pore, because it's just kind of like as the sebum, the oil and the dead skin cells are just kind of coming to the surface. It's really just a strand of like just kind of skin cell material, it's kind of sticking up. It's not really even that, it's, it's not even necessarily part of acne or anything, but a lot of people are bothered by the way they look. Like I get on, when I, when I get out of the shower, I really notice them because when you're, when you're after you get out of the shower, the stratum corneum, the, the, the stratum corneum, the top of the skin is super hydrated. So this, that stuff swells up and the sebaceous filaments are like, whoo, rip roaring. So I really notice them when I get out of the shower. But then as soon as I put moisturizer on, that's it. I don't really see them. But all that to say, urea will help kind of control that a little bit if you have them there and they're more noticeable like throughout the day because urea softens some of that stuff and it helps with moisture content in the skin. So it'll just kind of plump up the pore, the, the surrounding skin around the pore. Kind of helps minimize the appearance of that. Oh. For the most part, I shampoo my hair every night. It's just a habit. But tomorrow I am waking up even earlier than I normally do. And I don't want to have to feel like messing around with my hair too much. So I think it'll be easier on me if I don't. I was chatting with you guys too this morning about the uh, Dope Sick book 
and I was reading more of your comments throughout the day about you guys really seem to like the show so I need to get my eyes on that <laughs> I need to, to watch it the storyline if I didn't already say this this morning I can't remember already it's picked up a bit but I saw a comment from one of you guys saying that the book is just not anywhere near as good as the show which happens from time to time you know that statement the book is never is always better than the show or the movie it's not always true I've started watching though on Amazon Prime the Lorena Bombit Bombit Lorena Bobbitt docu series, primarily because yes, the story or whatever was very shocking, at least at the time and like eye opening. But I felt like we never really got closure. And watching this documentary, it's it's interesting. This was like pre social media internet. I think I don't know if the internet existed at that point, but I remember when the Lorena Bobbitt thing came around. I just felt like everybody was so focused on how shocking what she did was but we didn't really get much closure or much as far as like her story his story like i can't remember any of that and looking at the news footage that they're showing in the documentary it seems as though the way it was covered i don't know it's just very different than how it would be covered today and like I don't know. People are less shocked by speaking about genitalia. I would just, I, I don't know, maybe not, but I mean, yeah. So I've only watched the first uh, episode of it. I think it's like a four part thing. So I don't know if they're going to go more into her story in the second one. Anyways, guys, I'm going to wrap up the vlog here. I hope you all enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out Mizen. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.